Good afternoon, how are you doing today? Uh, today we're going to take apart the Turbo Hydromatic 400, so we'll get started right away. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take off um, the tail shaft, modulator, governor, and keep all those bolts separate um, from the internal bolts. So I just get a plastic pocket, keep all the external bolts in there. Go ahead and take off the uh, tail shaft. That's the governor itself. You want to check the plastic gear, make sure that it isn't stripped, it's common. Modulator valve. Modulator itself. Okay, modulator valve inside. Sometimes they'll stick. If so, we can take it out when we get the pan off. Go ahead and flip it over. I've already taken most of the bolts out of the pan, just to holding it on. Filter bolt, it's got a little shoulder on it. Filter. Filter two. Now there's no ring on this tube where it goes up in the case. Some people like to put two on. I do myself. We're going to put a deep pan on this, so it's going to, we're going to change that to to a longer one. So you have a series of half inch head bolts and three seven sixteenths head bolts. One is for the detent spring. Now we have the two governor tubes going in the back of the case. We just had to grab the screwdriver and get these governor tubes out. That valve body will come right off. Take the two governor tubes out of the valve body. You can set that aside for now. There'll be one gasket on the valve body here. We have our detent solenoid. At that point, the separator plate will come off. You'll have a case gasket. Now, the valve body and the case gasket are different. You can see here that says VB. It tells you the valve body. Here it says C for case. Next, we'll take our uh, reverse band servo. 
cover off for half inch head bolts. Cover, metal gasket, servo itself. You can see it's got no ring around it, spring inside, intermediate servo, spring, <coughs> cap, with the piston, and the ring, see the ring on it. Okay, so usually there's six check balls in here. One, two, three, four. This one has none, which would be five, and this one here is six. Now this is a reverse pattern valve body I've taken off. So there is a shift kit in that valve body. So under the instructions, they probably left that ball out for that's part of the kit. Okay, so this pump has uh, six bolt holes. I've taken the uh, other five already out. <coughs> That's the last one holding the pump in into the external bucket. Now there are two threaded holes, one here and one here, for a uh, side hammer type puller. There's also pullers you can clamp on here. And which push on the uh, input shaft, which pull and pump out. I usually find that they haven't been in there for a long time. <coughs> Just a rubber mallet will usually loosen them enough to get them out. Pump gasket, case gasket. We'll take the pump apart late, at a later date. We'll go through it. And you're going to have forward drum. Correct drum. Now you can see this band. This drum has been burnt. It's got a burn mark where the band is. The band looks burnt also. You can see there's a fiber washer that goes in between the two drums. We'll take put this aside for now. You have your intermediate band. As you can see, it's burnt. Okay, next is the uh, intermediate clutches. A large snap ring. Quite large. <clears throat> and you have your intermediate clutches. Now, in the stock tranny, there would be a wavy one at the last. As you can see, this one's been replaced. We want it, or, sorry, it hasn't. This is the wavy one. We're going to replace that with a flat steel for the racing transmission. You have uh, your pressure plate, three clutches, and three steels. <coughs> okay, if you can see this bolt right here, this is a bolt that holds the center section in. And you have to have a special socket to get in there. It has to be a very thin walled 3 8 12 point socket. You can't have a thick wall or it won't fit in there. Take that bolt out, get that center section out. And that's a special 12 point, point bolt. Once you've got that out. <clears throat> now to get the center section out, there's a very large snap ring in here. You want to get in behind it and get something to 
pull on it. I usually use a 90 degree pick. Now once you get it started, then you can go in and get it up there. Now this is different than the other snap ring for the clutches. This has a taper on it on the outside edge. So you want to be careful not to distinguish the two. And if we just go ahead and pull our speedometer pinion out. Just the one bolt at the back. It houses the speedometer. Just a bolt and one, one clamp on it. Just hold it on. You can go ahead and get in behind it. Okay, this is the speedometer pinion I'm talking about. You can go ahead and get in behind it with a screwdriver and just pop it out. Just the one gear goes on it. There's an O-ring around the housing. Then at that point, you can just go ahead and pull the whole gear set, everything out in one shot. Like so. Then we can go ahead and just take that center support off. So there's a washer that goes in down in here. Then there's a Torrington bearing also. You can see the race right here. The race is, uh, there's going to be three Torrington bearings in here. And they're all different, so you want to keep them separate. There's the other part of the Torrington bearing here. That's one. We have our reverse carrier. The band rides around. There's a washer. Goes in. Inside here. Rides on the carrier here. You want to check these gears. Make sure they're all in good shape. And then there's a spring and roller assembly. When you pull them out, usually if they're bad, the rollers will fall out. What happens is the springs split in them, and then they don't keep tension on the roller, and then the roller will fall out when you take it out. I'll just go ahead and put that back in there for now. It looks like that assembly is good. Then continuing on, there's two washers at the back. The three tang washer sits down in the case. This washer locks onto the gear set here. There's part of the other Torrington bearing. We'll go ahead and take this snap ring out. Snap ring. Output shaft. That's the last Torrington bearing here, which goes here on the output shaft. So that's number three. And this is number two in here. You can see this Torrington bearing here. 
and this was a race that came out of it. So that's number two. So we have one, two, and three Torrington bearings that came out of that this unit. So these are the three Torrington bearings here. This is the first one we took out, which goes on on this carrier here. Then we have the second Torrington bearing, which fits in here. And then we have the last Torrington bearing that goes in between these two pieces, the output shaft and this gear carrier, and here. So you want to mark them and keep them in order. Okay, we'll continue on. We'll take the direct drum apart. One large snap ring. Series of clutches. Steel's in here. Again in the stock one. The last one may, uh, in the forward may be a wavy. These clutches will all be replaced. We're going to have to use a spring tool, spring uh, retaining tool to, to uh, take this apart. This is the forward. Another snap ring. Reaction plate. You can see the clutches are burnt in here also. the clutch drum. There'll be a brass washer here on the bottom side, a fiber washer on the top that we took off earlier, which is this one right here. And again, our clutches. These clutches are burnt, will need to be replaced. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've removed the input shaft out of the forward drum. I just used a uh, impact socket and just tapped on it lightly. It came out, it's, it's not very hard at all. If you have a small press, you can use a press. Uh, we're going to install our tool. We can take the snap rings off. It's going to compress the springs. And spring retainers, so we can get this snap ring out of here. Now you can use C clamps, that will work also. Just take your snap ring pliers, I like to use a 90 degree set. Just release that tool. In the spring, <coughs> the retainers and uh, snap rings for both the drums are the same. But I would keep the uh, springs separate. It looks like somebody's installed some racing springs in here, which are much stronger. Go ahead and take that piston out. And I would take and put these in a plastic container or a bag and mark them forward, forward, so we know which is which. These are green in color. We have a lip seal that faces up inside the drum. We also have a lip seal on the outer part of the piston and a lip seal on the inside of the part of the piston. I'm going to remove all those. Next we'll do our direct drum. 
As you can see, this has been burnt by the BAM. You put that on a lathe and uh, sand it up with 120 grit. Usually that should clean up. If not, then you'd have to replace that drum. Again, same thing. Got cocked in there, so just put it back in. Remove our tool. Our spring retainer, snap ring. And again, I would keep these springs separate from the other springs so we know which are which. So these are the direct drum. Again, O-ring in the drum and the piston. Now I keep the piston separate. As you can see, this one is thinner. Possibly somebody's machined it, I'm not sure. And then you'll notice also either there's going to be a bearing in the piston or a bearing in the drum. Where in this wet drum, it's in the piston. So if we look in the forward, it's in the drum. So we don't want to mix those two up. And we'll take our center section. There's also a piston in here. You don't need a tool to depress that though. The springs aren't, there's only three springs in here. And they're not very strong. You can just push down on it. So it's just a snap ring, like a large washer, and you'll see the three small springs in here. That's all that's in there. Then you have your piston and two seals. This is the intermediate piston. So you want to remove those. Now we're going to make a nice little holder for our pump. We use extension housing. And take our pump apart. And we've got uh, five bolts. And if you look, the bolts have lines in them. Take those five bolts out. They go in the interior bolt pan. And we have two ceiling rings here on the pump. You want to take those off. They're going, to, they're going to need to be replaced. Now these are a cast iron ring. 
we're probably going to update the Teflon rings. And you have your washer. This is a pressure regulator valve. It's probably been replaced. <clears throat> if not, we're going to check that it, uh, if it hasn't been replaced, we may shim it with a washer or get a new heavier pressure regulator spring. We'll show you that when we do the pump. This is a pump stator. You can see so this has been sitting around for a while. There is some a little bit of rust trails of rust in here. Other than that, it looks fine. Just want to make sure there's no grooves in this area where the pump gears ride. Check your bushing in the stator. These are the pump gears. Now these, you can see that uh, the inner gear has a dot and the lug always goes up. As you can see, they're, they're spaced different. Now if you don't have any markings, mark them with something so that you know which side is up. Magic marker, small, just a small scribe. So you can see the outside gear has a, and this one also has a little marking, so we know that's up. This is the pump body. You want to check in this area here, make sure there's no scoring. Light scratches are all right. This pump is in good shape. And we have a large O-ring around the exterior of the pump body. You want to remove that. We're going to put all new gaskets and seals in this when we rebuild it. Okay, uh, we've got the case standing up here. We're just going to go in, reach in, and just pull that reverse band out. <clears throat> if you pull on the opposite side, of where the uh, anchors are, it'll just pull right out of there. Okay, so at this point we want to go ahead, inspect the case very closely, uh, make sure there's no uh, lugs broken out of the inside of it or anything, go over it very, very close, uh, get everything cleaned up. Let's, uh, we want to go through all the uh, bushings in the transmission, make sure all the bushings are good. If the bushings are not good, take them to a transmission shop and get them replaced. Um, if you purchase a kit, I would suggest getting a kit which comes with bushings, clutches, steels, paper and rubber gaskets. Um, you might even get the bands with some of the kits. Um, I purchased some on eBay and had very good success with them. Um, so we want to clean all that up, <clears throat> get everything cleaned up very closely, uh, inspect everything, have a real good look at everything, make sure there's no hard parts that need to be replaced before you start the assembly. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can go ahead and email me on my uh, websites, brianswainonline.com, swainracing.ca, and swainracing.com. There is an email contact on there if you have any questions. Uh, that's it for now. Take care. We'll see you on the rebuild video, which will be on my websites also. Bye for now. Okay, so we've, uh, we've got our output shaft. We want to inspect it here. Uh, where it goes in the bushing in the case. Um, as far as your uh, internal gear and shaft, make sure all the gears, no teeth are broken in here. Uh, where the bushings ride on the sun gear shaft, they're not worn. Where it fits into the output shaft, it's not worn or gouged. Want to look at the reaction carrier? Check all your gears. Make sure there's no no play. Everything's looking good. We're going to start to assemble it. I'm going to do it in a vise here. This makes it a little bit easier. So we've got our output shaft. I remember we've got our three Torrington bearings. This is the rear Torrington bearing here goes on the internal gear here and fits into the output shaft. Now at this point we're going to, we've got our uh, other Torrington bearing that goes in the carrier here. I want to show you a little difference. As you can see this Torrington bearing, how many 
bearings are on it. This is the one I took out of the transmission. I'm going to upgrade to one that has twice as many bearings as you can see. We're going to install that one just because it has more bearings. I'm just going to go ahead put some grease on it. Just apply some grease. Get your bearing. Put it in. Again apply a little bit more grease. And then get your race. Put your race on. So this is a second Torrington bearing that's going in. And it's going in the gear set right here. This is the next before the rear, rear carrier. Apply some grease to it. Just slide it down on there. And now we can go ahead and put our rear carrier on. Okay, now that we've got that, we can go ahead and just lay this down. Okay, so what I've done, I've just flipped it upside down and just put it in the vise just so we can install our snapping in the rear carrier. Just makes it easier. And we can go ahead and turn it back up. Okay, next you want to get your plastic spacer ring, put some grease on the inside of it, slide it over the uh, carrier. Uh, at that point we can go ahead, we have to install our washer down in the carrier here, which is a four tang washer. We'll go ahead and put some grease on it. Just to hold it in there, we'll go ahead and slide him on. So, now we can go ahead and put our, uh, our sun gear in. We want to make sure that it, the inside, the chamfer goes down. Then we can go ahead and um, get our carrier, reaction carrier. We want to make sure the gears are all okay in here. Bushing's okay and your roller assembly is in good shape. We can go ahead and get our sun gear shaft, get it spined into the sun gear. Then we can go ahead and take our other Torrington bearing, the first Torrington bearing, It'll go on top of the sun gear, put some grease on it, and slide it down. Then in the center support, we want to get our small washer in here, which I've already installed with some grease, and our race for our turning to bearing. And we can go ahead and slide that on, and spline that in. Make sure that roller clutch is working. And everything looks good. Okay, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and get our piston for the uh, center section in there. I've gone ahead and put the uh, two O-rings on them. They're both lip seals. Um, and you have to watch because you see these uh, recess pieces here. They do fit into the center section, so you have to work it around to get them in there. We just go ahead and want to get our seal installer. Go ahead, work it around. Once we get the seal started in there, then we can go ahead and line up our our spring pockets.
location in each spring pocket and you have our retaining plate and this you can just do by hand next thing we're going to do is go ahead and put our rings on our center support. Now there will be six rings the same size. Uh, four, four for the center support, two or four for the pump. Now we're not going to put all four rings on this stator. We are only going to put three. <clears throat> so you're going to put one on the bottom, one on the second, we're going to skip the third, and one on the top. I've gone ahead and just put some lube on there. And then we want to stagger them. Like to make sure there's lots on there so the rings slip in there with no problem into the drum. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and install this whole assembly into the case. What we have to do is where the center support bolt is in the center section. We have to line that up with this center hole. You'll see the three holes in the case here. This is where the center section, center support bolt goes. So we have to line that up as we install this in there. And it may take a couple of shots, but I need it in the case as much as I can. I grab the output shaft. And we hit it first first time in. It may take you a couple of times to get it. And then we want to take our bolt. Go ahead and take our center support bolt, which is 3 8 12 point. Snug that up. Next we'll go on to the drums. Okay, we're going to go ahead and install our uh, piston in our um, direct drum. So we have the three seals, the one that goes in the drum with the lip up. And we have our small seal in the piston and the large seal on the piston. Now these three seals are exactly the same as the forward. Uh, so I've gone ahead and installed them and just put some assembly lube on them. What you want to do is just go ahead and take your feeler gauge. And just work that piston into the drum.
Okay, then we want to get our spring compressor. Install it, get our springs. Now there are two holes that we leave out and they're right directly across from each other. Let me go ahead and get our spring retainer and our snap ring. Go ahead and compress that. Go ahead and get your snap ring put in. Make sure it's fully seated. Okay, we're going to go ahead and install our uh, clutches, clutch pack. Now, uh, the uh, spec for clutch clearance here is um, 60 to 70 thou. So if you want to do your clutch uh, clearance, an easy way is before you go ahead and put the spring retainer in with the springs, go ahead and do your clutch clearances. You can get your feeler gauges in there. Um, and then go ahead and install your retainer and springs makes it a little bit easier for you make sure you soak your clutches for 30 minutes before installing them and also you have to make sure that there's a check ball either in the piston or in the drum it has to have one or the other in this case the, the check ball was in the piston and in the forward it's in the drum so you cannot mix those pistons up and your pressure plate I've gone ahead and done my clearances already that's a direct now the forward is done exactly the same way as far as the piston uh, as you can see the check ball is not in the piston it'll be in the drum right here and also if you're using this type of spring compressor uh, you'll have to press out the center shaft to use that and then press it back in later the only difference from the forward to the direct is that the seal for the drum that faces up on the inside we've left that out So again, we can go ahead and get our clutches. Now for this clutch pad, the clearance is 30 to 40 thou. And what we want to do is line these V's up for the steels. Lining that V up on the plates just allows the uh, oil to escape faster.
At that point you want to get your clutch hub, get your washers put on it. The brass thicker washer goes on the inside and go ahead and line the, the hub up to all the clutch plates. Till it seats down. Make sure that it's fully seated. And that's the forward drum assembled. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and assemble our pump. Now what you want to watch for is grooving, gouging in here, in this area. Also the same with the gears, any large grooving or gouging, they should be replaced. Make sure your bushing is good. Install your new seal. I've gone ahead and just put some oil in here for the gears. And go ahead and uh, install your gears. Now there's marks on the gears, there's a dot on the outer gear and a dot on the t lug on the inner gear and the lugs always go up. If you can see the space at the back. And you want to check your stator bushing in here, check for grooving in this area here get your o-ring installed around the pump around the perimeter of the pump I've gone ahead and put our washer on and our two ceiling rings and then there's also a bushing in here you want to get checked and I've gone ahead and added the added some assembly lube on and put the gasket on so we're, we're ready to go ahead and assemble the pump together And then you want to grab your pump bolts, which are the, they have the five lines around them. You'll have three long and two short. Then to align the uh, two pump halves, you want to get uh, a large clamp. What I've done is got to uh, a couple of uh, five inch gear clamps and just put them together and put them around the perimeter of the pump and just snug that, that clamp up and that'll align the two halves. Then you can go ahead and torque your bolts to 20 foot pounds. Then after torquing the bolts to 20 foot pounds, you can go ahead and take your gear clamp off. And that pump is basically ready to go into the case. Now you'll see this spring here. This is a pressure regulator, valve and spring assembly in here. You can purchase a stiffer spring, which will raise the line pressure. To do that, there's just a C-clip in here, in the pump. You just have to put pressure on, on this when you take it out. And there is quite a bit of pressure on it, so you want to make sure that you have some eyewear on. Protective glasses. Go ahead and push that down, take that C-clip out. Then you can go ahead and take this assembly, valve and spring assembly, and replace it with a stiffer spring. Now depending on some shift kits that you can purchase, it'll come with a stiffer spring in the kit for you to install that. Okay, so I've, I've installed the case into um, a drum to make it easier to see for the camera view. Now normally we would insta be installing this band before we put, this, put the direct drum in. But in this application, we're not going. To, we're going to leave the band out. We won't be using the band. 
So where we left off with we had installed the center support and put the bolt in the um, center support itself. But now we have to get this large tapered snap ring. It's the largest of them all. And install this in to this rear gear section and center support. What we want to do is we want to cover up this, this opening here in the case. We don't want the end of the, of the uh, snap ring to be in that area. We want to make sure it's seated fully. Then at this point we're going to go ahead and get our intermediate clutches and install them. Start with the steel, then a clutch, all the way up to the pressure plate. Again, make sure you've soaked them for 30 minutes. Now the pressure plate you can see has a, a large section here that goes in the large opening on the one side. Okay, so uh, next we're going to go ahead and put our snap ring in for our intermediate clutches. Now this here, if you look, it's a stock Turbo 400 snap ring. You can see how wide it is. We're not going to use that. We're going to use a snap ring out of a Dodge 727 transmission and this is for one of the drums in the transmission you can get them in different thicknesses which is nice about them and they have twice the area that the stock spring has so we're going to go ahead and use this and again we don't want the ends to be in that open area Make sure it's fully seated. And then you want to go ahead and line these clutches up. Try to line them up as good as you can um, because it, it is difficult to get them in. Um, so we're going to go ahead and give it a shot here. If you don't get it the first shot, take them out and try lining them up again. It is tough because you have nothing to grab onto except that spring retainer in the drum, which makes it difficult. Once you can get one lined up, then you know where to line the other two up. It can be tough. That's two. And we can get that third one just sort of close. Should drop right in. Just like so. 
And if you look down in the area where the splines are, you'll see that they'll be even. If they're sitting up, then it's not down all the way. Next, we'll go ahead and put our forward drum in. Make sure you have your washers and everything in there. Now again, we have to go ahead and line these clutches all up. I like to put a pair of vice grips on the input shaft. This makes it easier to, to turn. And if you feel down on the side, you'll, you'll there it's dropped down. You'll notice when the, uh, and then if you lift it up, and you hear that hard sound, you know it's all the way down. All the clutches are lined up at that point. Okay, so if you're if you're uh, you've purchased an aftermarket shift kit, you probably are going to have a spring in here for this pressure regulator. Um, they'll want you to replace it. Some do, some don't. Uh, if so, what you want to do is get in here and push on this sleeve assembly. I like to get the the pump in the in a in a vice. Go ahead and push on that sleeve assembly. Get in here with your snap ring pliers and pull that snap ring out of there. Now wear, wear glasses when you're doing this because there is some pressure in behind there and you don't want that to go flying. I'm just doing this to show you how it's done. And then there's a little boost valve in here. You want to keep everything in order. And that's your pressure regulator spring here. Now if you find that it's hard to get this part of the valve out, you can always go in. There's a, a roll pin at the back side here. You can take out and get it out that way also. And that's the valve itself. And then there's a horseshoe there also. The horseshoe goes in behind. That's basically how it goes. You got your valve, your horseshoe, and then the retainer for the spring, which the spring sits on here. So you'll just take that apart and go ahead and we want to put that back in there. Make sure it moves freely, naturally. Now I'll show you a little trick. You saw where that washer and that horseshoe is. If you don't have a spring and you want to boost the line pressure a little bit, you can put a washer in behind there, which will shim the spring out a little bit more, which will give it a little bit more pressure. You want to get your snap ring ready. Get that sleeve lined up. Just make sure it gets seated in there. You get seated fully. And that's how you replace the uh, pressure regulator spring. Okay, one thing I didn't show you earlier was putting the uh, new seal in the manual shaft lever that goes through the case where your manual linkage hooks up. Um, if you look down in here, you'll see it just looks like a nail head. Well, all that is is just like a finishing nail. It goes through the case and locks this shaft. So you just want to take this nail out, undo this nut right here, and then you'll be able to pull the shaft out Get your new uh, shaft seal in the kit. Go ahead and uh, put some oil on it. Tap it into the case with a socket. And then reinstall the shaft with the nut and the, uh, the nail. Okay, we're going to go ahead and install the pump. Uh, some people like to put two studs in here and set the gas.
lined them up. Then we want to make sure that this shaft still turns. At that point, you can go ahead and take your other three bolts. In this case, some might have four bolts left over. Go ahead and put them in and torque them to 20 foot-pounds. Okay, the first modification we're going to do is uh, drill our second gear ply and our third gear ply in our separator plate. This plate happens to be a B&M plate from a shift kit. In this application they wanted it drilled to 3 16 of an inch in both of these holes. Um, you can take your stock separator plate. You won't, you won't have to buy a kit. So this is, um, as you can see, second gear ply is this hole here and third gear ply is this hole here. Now if you want to go for all out racing you can go ahead and drill it to 3 16 of an inch. Um, for instance, if you're going for the street strip application, you don't want it shifting as hard. Uh, you can go smaller. So, for instance, you could go to 125 on the second gear and 140 on the third gear. Or, if it was a tow vehicle, go 90 thou here and then uh, go up to 110 here soften the shifts up a little bit so they're not as neck breaking as in a race transmission. Okay the next modification we want to do is uh, this piston is usually in here and there's a spring underneath of it and there's a C-clip that holds the assembly in there. What you want to do is clamp this in a vise then you'll be able to once you get the piston down low enough you'll be able to take the C-clip out. Go ahead and Throw the spring away and then go ahead and put your piston back in with the C-clip, eliminating the spring. So at that point you can go ahead and put your C-clip in here. And the next thing we want to do is this passage right here. We're going to tap that 5 16 if you can see. I've put a plug in here, a set screw. So I went and purchased a 5 16 set screw, drilled the hole, and tapped it. So basically, you're going to go ahead and uh, drill that out and tap it with that, that new set screw. Now, you, you have to be sure that when you tap that 5 16 and get that set screw in there, I would put some thread locker on it and make sure that it's below this surface here and not protruding up high enough that it's going to not allow the valve body to seal and what this is going to do it's going to firm up your 2-3 shift it's all go also going to firm up your 1-2 shift so that's a free modification the next modification we want to do is we're going to pull out the 1-2 shift valve which goes in this location in the valve body here we're going to pull out the aluminum housing and the one two shift valve and you'll see these pins all it is is this goes in the valve body this way and there's a pin that goes through and locks that into place you can see here and if you just put some pressure on it and then push that pin out the whole assembly will come out you can work it out with a very small screwdriver get the valve, the housing and the valve out and then what we want to do is you see this land here on the 1-2 shift valve normally this would be circular I've ground a half a flat on each side of the valve and then on each side of the valve here if you can see this would normally be circular so we're going to grind a flat here and a flat here we're going to deburr all that because this valve has to make sure that it moves freely in this bore. Then we're going to go ahead and there's an exhaust valve in this right here which I've drilled out to 7 seconds of an inch. And then if you deburr that and just take it out a little bit more with your uh, drill bit, not too much so you've got to be careful. And at that point you can take one of the check balls 
which came out of your valve body. You're going to have one left over. You're not going to be installing it. And we're going to go ahead and take that and drive this check ball into here and block that passage. Now at that point, what that's going to do is um, you can have manual low with that up to any RPM. Now what you have to be careful of is you can also downshift into first gear at any RPM but you're not going to have any band in there to stop. There's no application of the band because of the, we've taken the spring out of the accumulator here. So it, the engine is freewheeling. There's no brake that the band is going to apply which it normally would. So you have to be careful of the RPM that you're doing that you're shifting down in because you could do an engine damage if you say went from third gear to first gear and you're say say you're revving at 4000 RPM and all of a sudden you pull it into first gear you could have you could have problems so you have to be careful now and you have to make sure that you deburr this valve very very good because we have to make sure that when it goes back in this bore <clears throat> that it moves freely. It has to move freely in there. If not, you're going to have to take it back out and take some memory cloth or some fine sandpaper and also what you might want to do is after you drill the hole for the for the vent go ahead inside with some sandpaper in here and deburr that that drill hole. So we've gone ahead, we've put our valve in you can see that it's moving freely in there. After you've got that valve moving freely, go ahead, get your check ball into the case, or into the valve body bleed hole, sorry, and make sure that if you're having problems getting the, the, getting the uh, check ball in there, try to ream it out a little bit bigger so that you don't crack the valve body when you tap that check ball into the case. Then at that point you can go ahead and install your aluminum housing. Go ahead and put your pin back in. Make sure it's flush. And then we want to go ahead and make sure that that valve is free. Now as you can see you have to get a very fine screwdriver. As you can see, it's moving freely in there. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do, now that we've got the valve body all ready to go in, we want to go ahead and plug our case in right here. If you remember, we left the second top ring out of the center section when we installed the rear gear set etc. Um, so what we have to do we've created a, a leak there so what we have to do is correct that leak. One way to do it is to um, you'll see a port here this is the bolt that we bolted into the center section or center support sorry and in this port right here you can do it two ways you can go down and do it before before you uh, put this center support in you can tap it and put a 5 16 set screw in there, which I've done. Let's see if we can get you a good look at it. You can see right in there, I've put a set screw in here. If you look in the other side, you can see it's open. Or you can install a 3 8 cup plug in here, which will do the same thing. Okay, the next thing we want to do is get our rear servo. Um, you can put a new O-ring around it. Um, get the uh, interior piston. There's two rings on here you might want to replace. Go ahead and install that in there. And then get your spring. And go ahead and put your spring in there. Then at that point, we can go ahead and install that in the port here. Okay, so I've gone ahead and just put some lube around the seal.
Now until we get our retainer in there with our gasket, it's going to want to pop out, but for now we'll just put it there. Then at that point, go ahead and get your steel shim. And line up your cover. Make sure you get your shim lined up with the proper port here. Go ahead and install your six bolts and then snug them down. And go ahead and torque them to 15 foot pounds. Then you want to go ahead and do your intermediate band servo. So you have your, your push pin, your rod, you have your washer, and you have your piston that goes on, and you have a spring retainer that goes on like so, and then you have your spring. Now in some kits, they may have eliminated the band. If that's the case, then you don't need this. And then you go ahead and just Get your, your ceiling ring in there. Like so, and that applies the band. Then we can go ahead and get our chuck balls. Now in this case, we're going to be using five of them. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and install five check balls. We're going to put one in this location here. We're going to leave this location empty. We're going to put one in this location here. One in there. One in there. And one in the back. So again, one up here, one in this location, here, here, whoops, and, and there. Those are the five check balls. Then we want to go ahead and, um, and get our, um, our gasket. We'll go ahead, we'll just go ahead and put some lube on it to hold it, stick it to the case. and place it on there. Try to get it lined up properly. Okay, and if you look here you will see a C on, marked on the gasket. That tells you that it's a case gasket. And we can go ahead and get our separator plate and put it on there. Line it up. And get our valve body gasket. Same thing, line it up. Now some guys like to put studs in here. You can do that. It helps line everything up. Then we want to get our solenoid. Um, and there's a st sh steel shim gasket that goes with that. Go ahead and put it on. And at that point, we can go ahead and get our valve body. We're going to want to get our manual ship valve in there. We want to get our two governor tubes on there. Make sure that we've done all our modifications properly. Go ahead and turn it over. Line up your two modulator tubes. And then you want to go ahead and line up your manual valve. And just Kind of drop it down on there, get it lined up, 
And you might want to go ahead and, and just uh, tap those tubes in lightly just to get them started. I just like to get one bolt started and then you can go ahead and, and just tap your tube down in there. Then you can go ahead and get the rest of your bolts. Now you're going to have um, three uh, quarter inch I believe and the rest are three eighths. And the quarter inch ones will go in the location of here, here, and here. And the rest are three eighths. Sorry, five sixteenths, sorry. Then we have our detent spring. Has one bolt that holds it in there. At that point, you can just go ahead and work from the center out, get them snugged up, and then torque them. Okay, so next we want to go ahead and put our governor in. Our governor goes in, goes in the bore in this area here. And you want to make sure that this bore is very good where the governor excuse me, rides. And what you want to make sure also is that the valve moves. I hope you can see that when you move the weights together. The valve is moving up and down. Go ahead and put that in there. Wouldn't hurt putting some putting some transmission fluid on before you go ahead and put it in. And you just got your cover. There'll be a cork cork gasket in there. Go ahead and uh, get your cork gasket and four bolts and put your cover on. So you just have your cork gasket, four bolts. Pretty simple there. Now back to your valve body, torque on those, you want to torque them to 15 foot pounds. Just go ahead and stuck them up. Okay, next we want to go ahead and get our extension housing, get a gasket in your kit. Make sure you put your new seal in, make sure your bushing's good. We have six bolts that go in there. Get them all snugged up. Okay. 
Get all your six bolts snugged up. Okay, so next we want to go ahead with our speedometer pinion. You'll have a new seal to put on there. So just putting some lube. Now and again, for the street, you'll probably want to run this, but in the uh, full race application, you can go in, ahead and install a frost plug in there to eliminate that. Next is the modulator. Again, in certain applications, you may not even run it. Put your valve in there. You'll have an O-ring around the, the modulator. And it installs just with a clamp and a bolt. Then the next thing you want to do is go ahead and get your extension tube for your uh, filter. Go ahead and I suggest putting two of the O-rings around there. Go ahead and get it down in there and seat it. Then at that point you can just go ahead and slip your filter over. Have the one bolt that is a shouldered bolt that holds the filter in. You can see there's a shoulder on it, and it just goes through the filter, screws into the valve body, and it allows the filter to uh, sit down on that shoulder. Um, at that point, you can go ahead and go ahead and put your pan on, new pan gasket, and that about wraps it up uh, for the assembly. A couple things you want to keep in mind. Um, with these modifications we've done to the valve body, you can hold in manual low for as long as you want. It will not shift. Go to second and third. You can pull it down into first at any RPM and it will shift. But you have to realize that if you've eliminated that band in there, you do not have any braking in the transmission anymore. So if you're going from 4,000 RPM and you downshift into first gear, you could have engine damage. So be aware. Be very aware when you're pulling that shifter down into first gear. Don't be at maximum RPM because engine damage will occur. Just keep that in mind. Um, that about wraps it up. If you have any questions, contact me on my websites. I have email it there. You can uh, get a hold of me on. Uh, Brian Swain online.com, swainracing.ca, swainracing.com. All three websites have emails attached to them. If you have any problems with the assembly, you want me to answer any questions for you, please don't hesitate to uh, send me an email. Again, thanks very much. Uh, hope you had uh, fun building the 400, and we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.